I have a reference here of Italy, and you could see picture of the bullet shape here, um, things like that you want to look for. So what I do is I start my class teaching you how to draw those large shapes. So the shape up in here, see a strong vertical line here, and that's what I like to teach you at first today. You go like this here, like that. Take that up there. Grab some of my tools. I'm using graphite charcoal. So if you look at them, you can see the charcoal, and it's quite soft. Like that. Now I'm going to take the tip, look at the point, see how it feels. Now when you get these, they're all square edged. I like to break them off, and I grab myself my piece of sandpaper. Come along and I sand the sucker down like this. And on its side, you get all the dirt off from the previous stroke. Notice how clean they are. I don't mix these with my dark pigments. So that's what I like to do. So it's just basically a soft charcoal. Now, so we've got our paper. A few of the other tools I use is the stumps. Tortillos, if you need to say that, but um, they're basically paper stumps that are good for smearing. They can smear the pigment like that. I don't know if you can see much of that right now, but. And then there's the kneaded eraser you might want to have. I like these because you could use them, they're really flexible. You could use the width of the side like this, come back and lift up some area. Now, notice. You can only lift up part of it. You'll see some of that stuff as they go through the picture, especially in the shadows over here and over in here. So some of those darker areas, I like to use the kneaded eraser. And we also have pencils. We have light pencils. This one's a charcoal pencil. This will probably be the one I use because it's very soft and Blending, it's got a very smooth feeling to it. Now I'm working on my tin paper. It's a pastel paper. You can see that it's very smooth on one side, more texture on the other side. This side has a lot of texture to it. So you can use that. Plus I have a pencil here, which is a white pencil, which I don't think I'll be using. Come along and use that like that. Can't get as white as this or what I blended here, but you can see you can get a nice white to it. So but I do like this one for drawing to start off. If I'm keeping it starting to work from light to dark, let me see if it's easily a little too close here. There we go, like that. This here pencil, this pencil here. All right, so we got our paper here. Get down there. Now, when I look at this picture, I'm looking at the shapes. Hmm. That looks like a bullet shape, doesn't it? Like that. Or you can think of it as a circular shape here. Like that. So what I would do is go like this. I'll start something very quickly with this. Now, starting off with a straight horizontal line is a good idea. Because if I can see what a light and dark change, even though this wall runs straight through, I'll go like this. Put down my oval shape, a circular shape like that. This side here, probably somewhere right around here. I don't want to go too high with this line because I know I got to get the top end arch. I want some room above the paper in the sides. Because if I do like this picture, I come along, I mat it, and I would lose the edge. All of the edges is going to be lost. So that's basically. Okay, now we start to go into perspective. So we have some perspective space. I got a lot of room to show some of this wall on this side if I need to. But I got a little barrier on this side because I know the, I know the structure is going to end right around here. So I got to start finding out where I want to start working. So imagine a line somewhere down here in my mind's eye. 
So, but look at that. We got our bullet shape started. My hand is swinging. You'll see a lot of this in my work. Yeah. And once you get that to that point of the picture, you start looking at the shapes in there. Hmm. Kind of interesting. Sometimes I get lost and I start wanting to work on a figure. There's this little buddy hanging around her. He doesn't look too small though, but there's his buddy. I'm looking at the shapes around her. I can grow off from her, or I can start working on my perspective. Perspective is a class that I teach in uh, a session in my class that I teach to a lot of people. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on perspective. So I want to feel about the distance here. So I'm looking at it, saying, where's my perspective? Where's my perspective? It's a tough one. We have an arch, arch street, and you have all these windows in there. So what I do is I decide how close that I want this figure to the building. So they're actually pretty, pretty close. And I'm going to go like this here. So I'm going to show you how I start to switch over to using judgment lines. So that's part of the first part of drawing is called gesture drawing. So I start by working for the large shapes. And then I start throwing in some of the judgment lines. Judgment lines means that I come along and I, I can judge the angle of this line by holding the picture parallel to the, to the drawing, put my pencil on the angle of the picture line that I want to draw, come over to my picture, and I go like that. Look at I got that line just like that. I know it's generally in that area. That's why this pencil is so important when I start off. As you see, I start up here to practice it. I'm holding up the tip. So we're going to come back and this in here, this, this, this. Now I'm going to go into this drawing here. So right away I'm, going, I'm thinking in my mind's eye, I go like this. I've been using shapes, large shapes, circles. It could be a triangle, it could be a square, it could be an oval, um, things of those sort. Yeah. Do my judgment. Come across like that, like that. So I've got these. This portion is the windows here. Every window after that is going to come to this area and it's going to start to turn up towards us. Just as it goes down, it starts to fade, fade gradually. So I'm going to use my judgment lines to judge my windows. So I'm looking at this next door in this building here, right around here. It's another bullet shape somewhat. I'm going to go like this. That's too high, because if I go like this, I judge the top one. I can see it's only slightly above this one, so I'm going to lower it. Now, I'm trying to tie this together with all my drawing techniques, using the judgment lines, looking at the large shapes, and then I'm going to start moving on to some of the contour drawing. And I use more judgment lines at the end of the point in the contour drawing. So I'm going to go like this here. I use the work with my perspective. Now, at this point in the picture here, I take my needed eraser and I decide which lines I want to get rid of. I want to get rid of this bottom circle shape here. 
You don't want to abuse this paper by erasing so hard that it starts to give a different burnish look to it. It's not a good look. So we want to keep it pretty refined. Now I'm going to put my rest of my windows in. These guys run about a little above halfway point. Somewhere right around here. Kind of like that, yeah. So uh, what I do is I judge them, look at it like this, like I said, generally all go in this direction. Now once you get to that point, then you can start working upwards. Now I'm going to start quickly putting in my gesturing drawing with my shapes. Come from this window, go up to this window. Put my finger on the edge like that, right like that. Okay, looking good so far. I'm going to judge these wires, same way, use my perspective. If you, you find something that's straight in the picture on, a, on, a, on an individual object, like this picture here, you come back here, you draw that line straight through. See if it came like this, like that. This one here is probably put on pretty straight. This is my vanishing point on uh, my picture, somewhere right around here. So down here, it'd probably be right around here. So the vanishing point comes back to here. So, you understood that? Good luck. Now this one is starting to work too light, too dark, excuse me. I'm not putting hard enough or I'm not using it enough. So now I can come back and start to erase some of those lines. This pencil will be easier to erase, but I watch the difference. Now I'm using my contour drawing. Contour drawing is how far do you feel your line went? This was my first contour drawing. Now I'm working on this light with this light pencil on a dark paper. Most of the time I'll put out a black and white drawing of some things of that sort. You'll see here, some other examples, this one here is uh, a scene of perspective. So you can see I was talking about hatching, how we hatch, broken this direction upwards like that. So it's basically using a pencil to promote a dark into a light area. So this picture was light like that. In this picture here, in the class, some of them had a hard time drawing the structure. So what I did is I blew it up for them, drew it a little bit larger, and hopefully they understood. So that was that one. This here scene is a portrait. And I started this off with the gesture. So you could, I don't know if you could see it, it's very light red. Now when I work in this, I use my, my red Conti. 
These are just quick sketches in the class. How we draw the portrait. So I, I started off with a circular shape like that, and then I went right into the contour drawing. One, two, three. And this is what I'm doing right now with the contour. Oh. Yeah, I'm down there. Let me see what's going on. One was an image of Van Gogh working on his farm. And um, you can see the shovel coming here. Now, this is an example of the contour drawing, which is stage two of my drawing. Come back, look for the large shapes. Yeah, that, that. Started pulling. I was going into the contour drawing. So, what you do with the contour drawing, you look for the long shape. You feel that shape out your arm, then you keep going from there. Now, the shape here was a short one, short and a medium one up to long. So it was working from the reference. Now, working on our scene here, this is going to be fun. I'm going to grab myself. Some new toy for you. I have charcoals. These are charcoal blocks. They come like that. I bought a case, a case of these. I have a lot of these guys around for my class. And you can see here, I'll do it over here. And I'll start right here. You now this one's not broken in. So what I do is I have my students, they break them down. Notice when I push on it, I'm gonna get two, two different shapes. So I grab it by a pincer, like a pincer like here, and then I go down. Uh, it's getting better as we go along, the more I work on the edge. And I just continue to work. I start working my large shapes to the small shapes. So I started pulling this edge out up here. As you do this, you get better at it. So that's working with this one. Now I got a smaller one. This I've used before. So I got it broken down on this edge. See when you get these, these charcoals, sometimes they have like a hard, waxy feeling on the outside edge. Most of the times you find that with the Conti drawing, the Conti pencils. But uh, we got our Let's look at this. Come along. Now this is a ch charcoal over there here. This one here, I use this one here for my lights, this side my for my darks. Both of them got white on them right now. This one I got my darks. Now I don't like, like I said, I don't like to mix my charcoals with it. I just don't like the way it looks when they blend on the paper. It looks mucky, it starts to dirty the picture up. It's very direct, very quickly. So some people like to work slow, some people like to work fast. Just take your time. Put a little bit more of this in here. Now, when I come to a little bit of a darker area, like here, compared to here, so if you take a look at that, very light to medium value, and then to the dark value, which we already have here. So. Don't get confused with what we're working with here. This will show you how to work with this pigment. 
I'm going to slide over to this side here. Some of this side here. Those windows start to come out. Get that extra window here. Now you can use your stump. Once you do this, you made a commitment to use the stump. You use your finger, or you could use an old t shirt that's usually a light value. So we got that, then they come along like this. You can slightly scuff it. You're not going to build into the surface. This is the texture side of the paper. Maybe I should have used the smoother side. Quite a bit of good idea. At this point, when I'm putting in my lead stroke, I'm going in the fashion of the perspective, which way to break the outer layer of structure in this case. Looking good so far. Come back in here, block this in. And so I'm working all these middle values. Now I can start to work forward. I'm just trying to avoid my really dark darks like the dog and the person. I'll show you this in the next step here. Now I went into the figure. If I wanted to learn how to draw at this point, then practice it all along, do my circular shapes. Using my drawing. Now, I like drawing like this here on, a, on an easel because I'm working away from the picture and I can stroke with my arm. And a lot of times I don't even use my wrist. So I'll go like this. Lines. Okay. Now I look when I when I drop my my chalk, I look for the spot that I want to work from. So there it is, like this. Now the reason why I just scuffed these areas is so you could start to see. How uh, it's laying the underlayment of a value change. It's very hard to see this at this side part of the picture. I just start working it like that. So that's like the, the pouring from the windows. Now, eventually getting up to my lights by working this way. So now there's one behind the dog here. Now 
I'm looking at my picture here. I don't want to lose my cast shadow behind this image. That cast shadow is run out at an angle here. I'm using my judgment line like this, judging the angle. So I'm putting in a shadow, but I want the soft edges around it. But even more importantly, I'm drawing it. It's getting put in there. Now, as I start to move on in the picture, I start to think about, hmm, how am I going to put in those little subtle half tones? So what I also got here is a sandpaper block. There's sandpaper, and I got one, two sheets left. But this sheet here, you can see as I work through, I was working with dark Conti at one time. White, black. This is probably a charcoal. That, and here's my white Conti. Here's one point I like to use my baby finger on this. I take it and I, and I sand my finger down on the paper like that. And look, I got white on there. So now that's going to be a nice touch. Everybody gets their own feel for the picture. And I'm going to come back like this. Follow this through. I don't know if you can notice this here on the picture. I stand here. Like that. Now I come back and I start to lift out the edge. You know, all along I'm working, come back and erase some of the lines. Clean up some of the edges. Most importantly, I'm continuing to draw. Looking at the shape of the figure. So this, at this point in the picture, I just continue on, continue on working for those large shapes and small shapes, like the dark. So now what I'm going to do is, by the way, this image, let me show you one last thing. I grab my chalk. What I'm actually doing is showing you the possibilities with this. I wanted to put a couple of these windows in here. I know it's hard to see on the paper, but just imagine. Wait till you see it close to you. Getting brave. I'm starting to pull more strokes. Now, this one's a darker one. Slightly soften that. And you could soften the edges too. So you can do triangles. Circular shapes. Squares and rectangles. By using this and going back to the beginning. You can look for kidney bean shapes. <laughs> that looks like a hot dog. <laughs> so we got that there. So now, here's here's the finished piece coming up. 
don't want to lose all of this. Okay, there we go. Now we got the image here. I'm looking at it and says, oh, it's pretty good. It looks like the picture. We got the image here. But it got a little scuff coming over here because it's just fresh from this morning. I'm going to take my kneaded eraser. Now that I look at it, it got scuffed. It's a windy day outside. Portfolio got knocked over. Everything was being blown around. So it got a little dirty. So I'm going to grab my eraser again. Come back and clean up the edges. So I'm also using the kneaded eraser as a drawing tool. Just clean up the inside torso. That. Come back and clean up the outside edge. Remember, I don't want to scuff too hard. Now, especially because on this surface, I use the opposite side of the paper. The opposite side. Very slick surface to it. Leave that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back. I want to finish up in this area here. Come back and work in this area here. All depends on how much wiring and things that add I want to add to the picture. This one here is going to go like this. Start off with my kneaded eraser. Clean up some of these LPs. Come down in here. Lift out a few little highlights. We'll shape the edges. Draw little mortar shapes in there. Make sure you're following your perspective using the judgment line. You just look at the picture if you want. Now I want to put the little cast shadow. There's a lot of shadow in here, but there is some reflected light. We got some shadows down here. I'm going to lift out a couple bricks like this. And like that. I want to clean up my edges down here like that. Like that. Add a little detail to this building here. Now notice when I use my needle eraser, I give it a squeeze like this. And I get it to a nice sharp edge like that. If you want a little small dot, you just get a little pin on the top. So I'm lifting out again, putting a cast shadow underneath the wire back in this area. Put one here. That, that. Now I can use my white again. I'm going to start pulling this part of the structure out on this side of the room. Now 
Make sure you go back to that same spot. Hmm. Good. Now there I rode up on the edge. Even though I'm getting a big stroke with this one, I'm pinching it real hard my fingers. What are you gonna have a phone in the new house? I wonder what they're doing watching TV today. Come up in here, pull out this structure here. Got a whole set of windows up here. So pretty much this, this portion is unfinished, unlike these areas down here. I'm gonna come back and just I want to pull out the structure on the top. Well, should I lift or should I use my needle eraser? I would probably lift first. So I want to put a little cash out of wedge like this. That. Now I grab my needle eraser. I shape a small spot at the tip. Something like that wide. Start at the top, pull down, work on my shoulder. There's my window. But they got cutters on your windows. <laughs> Here's the other one. Uh, who cares where it's at? It looks proper. Come back and raise this. Now I'm going to go to my, my, my graphite, looking at the tip. I could also use my pencil if I want. Something like that. So you can see how I got it scraped off with my razor blade. See how wide it is? There we go. Now I can come back. I want to start suggesting. Now I want to show you a few things about the shading. So remember we were talking about the hatching? Showed you that earlier. You can hatch in the direction of the object. Turns, or in this case, kind of runs like this. Shade like that by using your hatching strokes. Turn 
forgiveness and subtlety. What I'm doing is I'm just tightening the value, lightening it up. Now that time I pushed my pencil up. And certain certain times people like to pull the pencil or pull the pencil, draw it with the pencil. They'll take their shapes, they'll start working it. Yeah. Now these are very subtle little highlights on the edge of these lines. At this point you don't want to rest your hand on the surface. I rest my hand on here too much, I'll, light, I'll lighten up the lights, and it just starts to become a big dark mass. Of it. That's good. So, at that, now I want to pull out my other dark. See, when I start to approach the end, I start pulling my darts out, cleaning up the edges. The better I get at it, the less edges I have to clean up. For something like this, it's a little bit tougher because it's an architectural rendering. Sorry, I forgot you guys were here. I was just having a little fun. <laughs> just gonna get lost in it. So much for that. I've added the detail. Now I want to put in some of these medium highlights down here. Should I work off of that? Should I use my sandpaper pad? I'll grab my finger on the sandpaper pad. I'm using everything in my advantage. Short stroke like this. That comes down to this hand here like that. Oh, look at that. Your finger again. I'm looking down at here. It's a triangle shape on doors. Looking vertically, comes straight across, starts right around here. And the better you get at these drawing these shapes, practicing these shapes are very important. And the quicker you can respond.
pretty good. Now I'm going to come back and pick up some lights and darks here. Now this looks like a picture of one of those signs you walk up to. Just stop and look. Picture comes like this. It's almost set on an easel. We'll make an easel here. Yeah. Now this procedure I'm going through usually takes two hours, but I'm doing a short one today so you can get the feeling for it. Besides, it's such a beautiful day outside, time to get ready and get going, clean up some of my edges. Especially down up front here. See, this is a bench I want to pull out. Cleaning up the area of the picture. Well, I hope you enjoyed our class today here. A little workshop. And how to get started that way. Now, in my class at, at McCord, what I try to do here is Teach all these things, watch you develop, watch you create your own works. Um, somebody comes in with an idea, I'll work with that. We'll work with some more of this here. Let's pull out this edge here. Now, look at the mistake. It's a little bit light. It's jumping out of the image. We'll come back and we'll soften it up. Now, when embracing, you can see I've been using the point all along. Now, in this case, I want to widen it out to get somewhat of the general shape. That lift it up. Perfect. So this is just the medium pressure I'm putting on the chalk. So a heavy pressure when I put, put a real light light in. So in the class we do different things. We, we use pen and ink. We learn all about the techniques of the pen and ink. Um, the type of subject matter you gotta look for when like and doing a pen and ink. But uh, more importantly is just having fun.